All right, so the recording should be going now. Cool, cool. Um, so you should be able to see my presentation right over here. And uh, at any time, if you have questions, just put them out there. I'll break at a couple different points to uh, take questions if you guys have them. But um, the, the one thing I think is important first is to say that I've got the link to this presentation right here. So if you guys want to just go through the presentation on your own, feel free to use that link right there. If you copy and paste that somewhere else, you can ignore me, mute me, not pay attention, and just go through the presentation on your own. I will not be offended and upset um, if that's what you're, you're trying to look at, you know. Um, I go into this presentation knowing full well that um, this is not going to be for everybody. And if you find this is not the tool for you and your virtual classroom setup, uh, something you, you don't, don't worry about it, you know. Uh, the, the most important thing and what we're trying to accomplish uh, uh, for today is uh, we want to offer you options, right? And the, the most important thing and something that I keep thinking about is making those connections with your kids is the most important thing. And so the technology you use is really up to you. And, and you know, when I spoke to Mr. Davis about this too, he, he said it before I did that, you know, they're not as concerned with the technology you're using to make the connection, so long as the connection is being made, both instructionally, making that relationship and building on that, the things that you've already been doing this year, right? And so that's definitely the overall goal here. Um, so keep in mind as I go through all this, that you know, what is best for you and your kids is really sh what should still be at the forefront of your mind. And uh, know that that's what's in my mind as I share all this with you, because I know some people will find it to be overwhelming. It's a lot. Uh, I know too that of course, if you have any questions, concerns, issues, reach out to me. You know, uh, my email address is on here. I mean, heck, I'll, I'll go on a Google Meet with just you. We could FaceTime over the phone. I'm, I'm glad to do whatever it is that I can to support um, anybody who needs assistance because I know that this is a uh, trying and difficult time for a lot of people, you know, um, and uh, uh, just know that going into it. So um, this focuses primarily on uh, YouTube Live. And um, so YouTube Live, Oh, yeah, hey, I mean, also, let me just say it's it's an honor and a pleasure that I was even asked to do this for anybody in the first place. So thank you guys so much for, for coming out. Um, does anybody feel like this? My toddler, uh, this is before the pandemic, by the way. We were at the park before the pandemic, and he went down this slide backwards. And then you can't see it because it's a GIF, right? But right after he got up, he looked completely confused. You know, he's like, oh, like, what happened? And if you feel like that right now, keep in mind that that is not just you. And this is one of those gifts where I really like it because I feel like it gets more amusing as it repeats again and again. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> probably because it's also my kid, so I think he's adorable, but alas. Um, that again, I, I say this and I, I kind of said it a minute ago, but even as a, a tech savvy person who lives and breathes technology in a lot of ways, I still feel like the rug has been pulled out from underneath of me and so that you are not uh, alone in that at all. Um, so the goals that I had in mind, because I like to always have something uh, specific, is that I want you to leave this presentation with the following things. I want you to be able to describe the differences between a Google Meet and a YouTube Live, because I'm sure a lot of you might already be wondering that right now. Why do I use YouTube Live as opposed to Google Meet? Would you want to use both? More one, more the other. And that's something that I want you to be able to leave with. Me personally, I will probably use a combination of them, but I will lean on YouTube Live for certain things for me. I want you to know, again, now at that uh, second goal down here, is I want you to be able to judge whether or not this even fits into your virtual instruction plan, period. Uh, because I know there's going to be people who walk out of this thing, well, not walk out, I guess, you might walk afterwards, uh, that leave and saying, you know what, that guy was nice, his beard was kind of cool, you know, that was all right. Uh, he actually wore a tie, even though he's probably wearing shorts, because I'm totally wearing like gym shorts with my tie and my, my nice shirt, um, that, uh, you know, this is not for me. Uh, to describe the pros and cons of a YouTube Live using a webcam or OBS. And this is the key thing, is that YouTube Live, you can do two different ways. One is ultra simple. One is a bit more advanced. The bit more advanced one gives you way more flexibility in what you do. The simple one is much more inflexible, inflexible but it is very straightforward. Um, and then I want you, everyone to be able to feel comfortable doing a YouTube Live using a simple webcam setup is what uh, I'm gonna call it, just so that way we know uh, where everyone's at. So this icon here is the icon for YouTube Live, this red one. This icon over here is the icon for Google Meet. And I put them at an angle because that makes it like cooler and stuff, you know? So uh, I thought that I'd just give a quick overview of what each tool actually does before we kind of show you a little bit. I'll give you a, a quick uh, a how to, how to get started in each one of these things. Um, keep in mind too, the presentation I shared with you was live for a reason. 
These are actually links. Right here, if you click this, it's going to bring you to YouTube's live streaming page. If you go right here, click this, it brings you to their Google Meet page. These are also links as well. So all throughout the presentation, you'd want to hover over different things that try to link to resources, some of them made by me, some of them made by others to uh, support you as, as much as possible and to get you the information that you want. So both of these platforms, remember we're talking Google Meet right now, as well as YouTube Live, are instant and fast to get started. If you wanna go ahead and be able to share information with your students, interact with them or colleagues in a PLC type environment, you can get instantly started, boom, just like that with both of these platforms. Um, that is something that they each have in common. Now, after that, they begin to diverge in a couple of key ways. YouTube, I'll be honest, it's just kind of fun. It's YouTube. I don't know if you talk to your students about this at all, but there are students, right? And I, at the middle school and the high school, I know this is confident, this is gonna be true, is that they watch YouTube more than anything else. They have favorite YouTubers, YouTube personalities. They have favorite YouTube series. They just sit there and they get all of their music from YouTube, even though they could save data by getting their music from somewhere else, right? And that's all they do. They do Netflix and YouTube. And so the fact that you would be interacting on them, on there with them, often uh, lends itself to a bit more of a playful kind of fun environment I have found so far. Um, and I'll be honest, Google Meet, it's a meeting. I mean, I put it's boring. It's not really boring, but uh, this is essentially all it is, right? You're in it right now. You've probably done a couple of these already. Now, Google Meet, though, here is where um, its strength is, is this little acronym down here. You can actually click it. brings you to the Wikipedia page for it. But this uh, acronym, it, it, it's pronounced as WYSIWYG. It means what you see is what you get. Google Meet is simple, straightforward. Here it is, this is what it does. You can meet via voice chat, there's a chat window, you can mute people, you can do video, um, you can uh, um, go ahead and share your screen, right? And that's what it does. It's uh, very uh, click friendly, right? Like you can do it all with your mouse. It's You don't need to know settings or anything fancy to do it. Um, YouTube, on the other hand, does not have screen sharing and student voice or video chat built in. It is a one-way thing in regards to video and voice. So no matter how you use YouTube Live, and I'm gonna split YouTube Live into kind of two segments in the next part here, um, it kind of diverges, there's two different paths you could take. Um, it's essentially me speaking and students only respond with the chat. Again, me speaking, students only do in chat, however, Here's where YouTube Live can diverge in an important way as well. It can be as complex or as simple as you would like it to be. So uh, how many of you, can I just get people in chat, can you tell me, um, how many of you had the chance to click and check out my sample video that I posted in the email, if you received the email? Because I know a couple of you I did not get on the email, so I apologize. How many of you saw that, even for a couple seconds, maybe a minute, whatever it is? Um, just let me know. Um, how many people did see that, so I can get a feel for it. Um, and this is also a link to, by the way, of um, getting to YouTube support page for how to make a more complex live stream and then how to make a more simple one. So also we got a few people saw it, did not see the video, I missed it. Okay, well, you're all terrible, terrible, oh God, terrible students. Um, so essentially, uh, maybe not all of you, most of you, that, um, if you saw one of my YouTube live streams, I have, because I use the more advanced version, um, it, it gives you infinite flexibility in what you would like to do. And so I'll kind of break that apart. But so if you're already thinking to yourself, why would I use YouTube Live over Google Meet? This is what Google Meet has to offer. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, Dorothy, sorry. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, by the way. You're all not terrible. You're all lovely and beautiful, and you all look great today. Let me just say, all of you look great. It doesn't look like you've been holed up in the house for the past two weeks probably not changing out of pajamas for the most part. I mean, I didn't even do my hair for two weeks up until I had to do this thing. I mean, geez, I didn't even do my hair for the assistant superintendent the other day when I had to meet with him. I mean, so you guys, you got the full full stop. Um, so this is where um, YouTube Live diverges. So this icon again is the YouTube Live icon. And so I, there's two different paths. So I, I took Google Meet out of the equation for right now. Google Meet does its own thing. You can see it, it's here, you can screen share. Now, instead, what YouTube Live though offers is these two different paths in which you can either go for this simple webcam setup or a more complex setup. And what you do is you use a program called OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. So YouTube splits here, right? And uh, regardless of which one you use, 
you can actually see in the middle here, I included what both of them have in common. No matter which way you go, students are always in just the chat, which might sound strange to you, but then actually, since so many students participate in like live streams and do uh, chatting anyhow, for them, it's actually much more second nature. I will say both of them, the actual web interface you need to use is a little bit clunky. I don't love it, but it's not terribly difficult to navigate, and I will show you that before we uh, head out today. Both of them uh, allow you to upload whatever video you live stream, right? So whatever I do live goes directly to Google or to YouTube, sorry, and it can live there. And so that way it's easy to share whatever you did and then go ahead and then take that and then share with your students um, via Google Classroom, whatever it is that you might want to do. Now, they diverge and they differ, uh, they differ from each other here. If you want to do a simple webcam setup, this is where I think some teachers would want to go. Here's what it does. It is just a webcam. So it means that you are there, you're chatting, you're talking, you're doing your thing. Um, this is as simple as it gets for a YouTube live stream. Here's the benefit though. You just post the link, students can come in to chat only, and that's all they can do. So um, you don't need to worry about muting people. You don't need to worry about people um, hanging out after the meeting's over. You don't need to worry about students turning video on and off. Nothing, none of that, that's all they got. Uh, it is a great way to get started to talk and discuss, discuss something quickly. It is very simple, but it is inflexible in that all you can do is what you see right here, right? Just webcam. OBS, here's the best way I could explain it. Um, think about the system of pipes that runs through your house, right? There is a water supply that comes in from outside of the house, right? So think of OBS as the central point that your water supply kind of comes into. And then what OBS will do is it actually can bring together all these different things into one central bit and then pipe it out to YouTube for you. So the simple webcam, it just takes your webcam and goes whoosh, right to YouTube. It's one pipe, okay? OBS, on the other hand, it is the thing where all the pipes join together, right? And then you can have your webcam coming in you can have music coming in. You can have a window down here, a video down here, and then it takes all these separate things and goes whoosh, and then shoots that to um, uh, YouTube for you. And so it lets you get essentially infinite flexibility. If you were thinking to yourself um, that I want to lean into this a little bit more, because I'll be honest, at this point, we don't know how long this is going to go for, right? Is this going to be up and through spring break? Is this going to be for the end of, till the end of the year? You know, uh, I don't know, obviously, Governor Murphy has said they're closed indefinitely. Multiple states have made the call for the rest of the year. But I would just say in the back of your head, I'd be kind of thinking, you know, if this goes past spring break, where do I want to be by then? Um, as opposed to kind of doing like incremental stuff, you know? Um, so you can add in and drop windows as you would like. You can live stream record offline. You can screencast and record simultaneously. So what OBS offers you over the simple webcam setup is basically you can pretty much do whatever you want on a computer live for your students while you interact with them um, on there. And uh, so actually this might be uh, helpful right here. Let me um, go ahead and this is the link to OBS project, by the way, this is where you download it. It's uh, free and that was a link I just got right here. So let me show you a little bit of what I mean as far as infinite flexibility goes, because I didn't do this in the last presentation but I think it'd be uh, helpful to show you guys. Don't worry about where I'm going right now. I just want to demo this for you really quick. And let me uh, pause the music so you can see what I'm talking about here. So this is a live stream I did for my students um, earlier uh, this week. And this one was done using um, OBS. Um, but so here, right, this is literally what the kids saw, right, when they first went going or first got started. So, right, I'll, I'll full screen this and show you a little bit what I mean. So, check it out. So, this is the beginning. Sorry, that jumped forward a little bit. So, here's what they saw at the beginning. And if you listen in, right, that music was actually playing for the kids. Now, do you need music? No, you don't need music, right? That was me just being me. But this is the screen they saw when they got started. And then after 30 seconds or a minute, the next thing you know, sorry, two minutes, three minutes, there you go. I got started a few minutes later. And then now this is what they saw. So then they see me in this big screen. So now right away you can see here, I made myself bigger. I've got the chat over here. 
I've got um, my uh, static images here. And so this just looks a little bit nicer. But then here's where that OBS program becomes much more fancy. I make this transition, right? So I'm here, I'm talking, whatever. And then from here, I'll mute myself so you don't have to hear me yammer on twice, uh, even though I obviously love the sound of my own voice. Um, and let me hide the chat window there. Obviously, I've been reading up on uh, the Dark Ages, coronavirus, and uh, I guess Joe Biden. Um, so over here, I'm waiting for this transition to take place. So boom, do you see that right there? That's what OBS allows you to do. Where all of a sudden I went from that one, they call it a scene, and then it's now transitioned to a, uh, a new scene. And then now I can have my website right there ready to go. My camera got smaller. And you can do different things with that that you just simply can't do in these other areas, right? And so you're going to find that um, if you want to lean into that OBS type thing, that that's what you'd be getting out of it, right? So for instance, right there, I just have a simple web window. There, another web window. And then right here, believe it or not, you see this right here? This is actually me piping my iPad directly to my computer that then they could see on the uh, display for them. So that's kind of where you'd be going if you want that more advanced, more uh, sophisticated setup, I should say. Sophisticated probably carries some connotations uh, with it, but just to give you an idea of why you might want to use this thing called OBS, right? It essentially takes all these disparate parts and allows you to bring it together and then shoot that to YouTube. So. Here, start on the left side as you read this, because this is why I have this icon here. And keep in mind that anything you can do with the webcam setup, the simple one, and, and I'll demo that for you here live. We'll do that first before I show you a couple of other things, can be done with OBS and you can do way more. That's what the circle icon is over here. That's the icon for that OBS program. So here are some instructional ideas, because then, you know, when I was going through this, it's funny. I added the instructional ideas towards the end of the presentation because then I realized I'm going through all this technical stuff, but I didn't actually tell you what are some ways you could use these in your classroom or in your virtual classroom, um, which by the way too, the only reason I would also say to think about what you wanna lean into in this virtual instruction, because this is actually a great opportunity because we know we'll go back to face-to-face -face instruction at some point, but there's nothing saying you can't take some of the stuff you learn here and then bring that into your actual classroom for later on. It's food for thought, right? As you start to learn and, and you're kind of forced, right? To do more of these things. It's something that I'm keeping in mind even as a tech savvy person as well. Um, you could do things like a lecture, discussion, teaching live and recording for later. Very simple, very straightforward over here with what I call the simple webcam setup, which is just literally my cam right here streaming to my students. Um, I could give a lecture. I could have a discussion with my students where they chat and I go back and forth with them. I could also teach it live, have that recorded uploaded to YouTube, and then I could share that with my classes later on, right? Um, so maybe I want to keep that as a sort of archive for a specific topic. Let's say, for example, I'm doing an, uh, an English lesson on uh, 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 figurative language, and I want to do uh, alliteration, let's say. And so I'm doing this little talk on alliteration, and I thought that it went really well. And, you know, I want to keep that for later. So if I have a student who was having a difficult time with that, I'm going to keep that link, and then I'm going to pipe it to somebody for uh, later on. And that might be something you'd want to do. You can also do something as simple as this. Uh, I just did a quick Amazon search. And for $20, you can get a 10 by 10 whiteboard with a little uh, stand on the back. And that means that suddenly you go from just doing a lecture to where if you just have a little whiteboard, you could actually move your webcam, right? So the webcam might not even be on you. It could just be on the whiteboard. And you can use that to demonstrate equations in math, scientific concepts, things like that. And you might be saying to yourself, well, why would I do that instead of trying to do the big fancy thing? I'm telling you, this is as simple as it gets. Like you could literally do what you've been doing in the classroom live online, right? If you have a simple whiteboard set up or if you got like a stand and a piece of paper or just had a piece of paper behind you. But then, you know, for instance here, instead of having my shelves, if I had a piece of paper hanging, I could be writing on that and you could have that just going right behind you and essentially teaching just how you would uh, like to teach. Um, and if you have your webcam, like most of you have built into a PC, you could still certainly do that. But then since uh, with a 10 by 10 whiteboard, you could do a lot of that too. You would just have it uh, closer. Um, this here is, um, again, in the middle, what they both can do well, both this simple webcam setup, as well as the advanced OBS setup. So the simple webcam setup and OBS, open broadcaster software, are good for lecture, discussion, teaching live, and recording for later for whiteboards. Here's what OBS though starts to do as I kind of demoed in the video that I shared with you, is that you can do things like viewing a video live and together with your students. 
So example, I could go to YouTube and you know, let's say I'm gonna do crash course history disease. Oddly enough, by the way, in my world history class, I was just getting to the Black Plague when all this happened. I just want to say the timing couldn't have been better because it was almost just like, like, well, how is this going to affect, I call it production distribution, essentially the economy, and students are like, it's going to be bad. And I was like, yes, we did it. We did it. Um, but so then you could bring up here, right, and you could do these videos, um, of course there's an ad, um, right, and do it with them. So that would be one thing you could do. Um, you could share whatever Windows, Docs, PowerPoints, student work, anything you can pretty much imagine doing on a computer, you can take with OBS and then pipe it in, right? Remember, it's essentially like you can take all these disparate pieces and meld them together to then send it to your students via YouTube. Uh, you can also do things like live annotation using Jamboard or Google Docs. How many, I don't, most of you probably haven't heard of this, but Google Jamboard is actually a free program. We already have accounts because it's a Google tool. If you go to jamboard.google.com, you can just get right to it, and it's essentially a virtual whiteboard, which is kind of awesome. And by the way, even if you don't do YouTube Live, you might want to use this anyway. Because if I click over here on the pen, I can just draw like it's a whiteboard with my mouse. But let's say you really don't like a mouse, but you have an iPhone or an iPad or something. I have my iPad right in front of me. And so if I go ahead to my iPad, I can actually go and look Ooh, I'm writing with my iPad. Oh, I opened up the wrong one. Slick, doing it live. Oh, there you go. So, right, it popped up right there. Um, and yeah, Dorothy, that would be, Jamboard should be a game changer for my math and science people, for sure. Trust me, I'm social studies, but I've been trying to think about you. I have. Um, this is fabulous. And by the way, like, doing OBS with this, or you could also do this with a Google Meet. I'll also show you one other tool you can do with this. And uh, for instance, I have an Apple Pencil. So for me, it's even better because, for instance, if you have an Apple Pencil, I mean, I'm talking, you can just write like this, like, it works very, very, very well. And it'll pop up here in a second, right? Here's what's also nice about this, by the way, just as an aside. Um, whenever I do these kinds of presentations in PD, I try to integrate in little bits and pieces that I think people might find useful, even if it isn't the overall topic. So Jamboard's nice because... It's a Google tool, so you see this sharing icon in the upper right-hand corner? Guess what else you can do? You can share it. You can share it to Google Classroom with your kids. You can share it with your colleagues. This could be a collaborative assignment for your kids to do virtually, by the way, everybody. They can get this app on their phones. It is free, and they can actually write on here with their fingers like it was a pen. So that means for my science people, for my, uh, if you wanted them to draw diagrams and things like that, right? You can certainly do these. Uh, of course, it's, it's bugged out right now. Sharing is usually available, by the way, everybody. You can ignore that for the moment. Usually it does work. Um, you can do all kinds of things with this. And um, you can also add in images, right, from your Google Drive, et cetera, and so on. Uh, you can, um, laser just means you draw attention to something and then it's going to go away. And then you can change what the pen looks like just a, uh, a little bit there, and there's some different things there. You can also clear the frame. You can use this to add new windows. And uh, it's pretty nice, it's pretty nice. Um, I'm definitely gonna be using this in my class to do different things. So um, I would definitely recommend checking that out. And the advantage to an OBS, like I said, the more advanced one is you can easily pipe that in, right? That's why you would wanna do something like that. Uh, but for my math and science folks, you might wanna just do that anyhow. So now here's where I'm gonna kind of break off and I wanna demo some of these for you because we get to about the halfway point. You know, that's a lot of information I know for a lot of people. You're sitting there saying like, Jesus, this guy just keeps going and going. Sorry, I need to fill an hour, everybody. They told me it's an hour. Blame somebody else. That's what I tell my students all, no. Um, that uh, <laughs> here, uh, I wanna show you how to get a very simple YouTube webcam set up going. I wanna show you a little bit of what OBS looks like. now. I'm not going to spend as much time on OBS in this specific presentation. Here's why. I'm going to guess that because OBS is more powerful but also more complex, there will be fewer people doing that. So I'd rather show you how to get started with a YouTube Live, a very simple stream. And then I just want to make sure you have enough knowledge so you can determine, is this something you want to get into, right? There are some of you, I'm sure, and you'll probably get in, you'll play, you'll figure it out. This might be what you would like to do. Like, I'll use it because, again, that's just what I want to do. But again, as I, I started off with is what's best for your kids, what you're doing and your connections, you know, and, and your instruction. That's the, the most critical part here. So 
Everybody in here right now already has a YouTube channel. A lot of you probably didn't know that. If you have G Suite for Education, which we do, it is made for you. So if I go to this link, studio.youtube.com, that is your dashboard for your YouTube channel. And anybody can do this right now. So if I click that, boom, this is my YouTube uh, dashboard. I did not make this, it was made for me. As you can see, I'm blowing up because I have 34 subscribers and I have 26 in the last 28 days. The reason I have 26 in the last 28 days is a crap ton of my students subscribe to my channel after I did my first live stream. I was like, hi. It was actually very exciting. It was super fun, you know? And I was like, wow, like that's something else, you know? And uh, I mean, I'll tell you what, the first one I did was before we had any schedule. And uh, I invited uh, a bunch of my classes just to try one out. And I had 25 to 30 kids with me for an hour live reviewing some stuff. I couldn't believe it. On top of that, I did one yesterday at 8 a.m. because now we have a schedule we have to follow. And I figured nobody would show up because it was 8 a.m. And uh, I still had nine out of my uh, 20 kids. It was like, yeah, no, nah, Janine, right? They do. They, they do miss school as much as they don't want to say it, you know? And uh, I'll tell you what. And if there's one thing, like, and uh, I, I was happy. Like it makes me happy interacting and talking with them because you forget how big of a part of your day that is as much as you're happy when summer comes around, right? And things like that. But now it's like the rug's been pulled out from underneath my feet and I'm like, and I like those connections too. So this is what I'm, I'm showing you right here is how to get a simple webcam setup going, right? And uh, I'm gonna turn off my webcam over here on Google Meet. Um, even though I know, obviously, you, you, you love looking at me. Um, I'm going to turn it off because uh, I need to show you over here. I'm going to need the webcam on this, this, this screen. So right here, it's a little redundant, but you see how it says create in the upper right-hand corner? This is where you would go to uh, make a live stream. And you see here it says upload video and go live. Do you notice something here? You see how this icon is exactly the same as the icon over here? They both do the same thing. So that symbol means go live or upload a video. Upload a video means I'm taking a uh, video from my physical computer that lives here and you're uploading it to YouTube. So it lives in YouTube. So I'm gonna hit go live. Now you see all this stuff, you can ignore all this to be honest. This is also gonna look a little different for everybody. Uh, I'm gonna go to create or go live or I'll hit this button. And so right here, I'm already in the right spot. Now the key thing to get this simple webcam set up going is you'd wanna hit here where it says webcam if it's on stream, it's gonna look a little different. This is where you'd go to do the more advanced OBS setup. Manage means that I'm just changing some of my different options here. You don't need to worry about this for the moment for the purposes of this introduction. But webcam is what you want to simply just get up and chatting as quickly as possible. So the title, it honestly doesn't matter that much unless you wanna go public. So I'll make mine simple, Mr. Mason's awesome stream. Now. This you can use for your own organization. So let's say you find this is something you do regularly and you're doing like little mini lessons on here or mini talks. You might want to give this a title that's more descriptive. Um, or if you're concerned about actually having this out publicly where let's say you know other teachers or students might find this on YouTube and you're totally cool with that and you want to just help people out. Um, this is where this next bit is really important though. See where it says public and there's a little drop down menu on the right. If you click that, for those of you who are not as familiar with YouTube, this might seem new to you. If you've ever used YouTube, you'll be familiar with this, but this you must, must know. If you make it public, anybody in the entire planet on YouTube, let me say this again, <laughs> everybody on the entire planet who's on YouTube can see or search for whatever you are doing live. A lot of you are gonna want this, unlisted. Unlisted means you need the link to view the live stream. So that means you post that link to your Google Classroom, your kids get it, and then nobody else is gonna find it or discover it on their own. However, your kids could share it with somebody else and then they could see you. Just keep that in mind. But generally speaking, I haven't had any issues with that. Um, so you're, most of you will want unlisted. Schedule for later only matters if you are doing a public stream. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, if you're doing public streams, uh, you can certainly look into that. Basically it means that you can set a placeholder on your YouTube channel so people can see when you are planning on going live. Um, now my middle school people, I'm sure some of you are in here. If you're a high school person, you do not need to worry about this. My elementary and middle school folks, this kids bit is important. 
I'm sure some of you have heard of COPA. My high school people who've never taught anything else, uh, forgive me, but you are ignorant of this one. Uh, I used to teach middle school, so I do know this one. Um, if you are teaching students who are 14 or older, you can just hit, no, it's not made for kids, and don't worry about this. Or actually, I think COPA is 13 and over, my bad. Can any middle school people correct me if they know what I'm talking about? I think 13 and over is okay for privacy, and then 12 and under, I think 13. It's 13 and over, not 13 and under. But So let's say 13 and over, you can just hit, no, it's not made for kids. Of course, I'm not a lawyer. I can't offer legal, adv offer legal advice, but this is what I've been told. Um, however, if you're teaching, what is it, 7th or 6th grade or below, right? Because 7th grade is usually probably 12 and 13-year-olds right? Sixth grade is usually 11 and 12 year olds, um, that you need to hit. Yes, it's made for kids. This does not affect your stream in much of any way, except it changes the advertisements on there. And just make sure you're keeping everything above water. Um, plus you're doing an education stream. Anyhow, I don't think anybody in here is trying to monetize this. Plus, since this is your education account, you can't monetize it anyway. That is make money off of your YouTube channel. Um, so based off of your population, you just want to hit yes, it's made for kids or no, it's not made for kids. Down here where it says age restriction and advanced, these options most of you are not gonna need to worry about. So do you wanna restrict your video to an adult audience? I suspect not, given we're teachers here. More options is something you probably don't need to worry about. Um, you can add an extra description. I'm having so much fun. Whee! Uh, category here, I would just choose education. And then these are the uh, webcam and the microphone that you have. Now, keep in mind, most of you are gonna be operating with a setup where the microphone and webcam is built into your computer. So you shouldn't need to mess with those. Um, advanced settings means you can simply turn chat on or off. Okay. Um, now, I would usually use chat on, but there might be circumstances where you want chat off. Who knows, maybe you just say to everybody, hey, you need to tune in for this lecture I'm giving. I'm going to present on this topic. I'm gonna to have a whiteboard by the side of me so that way I can draw things and et cetera and so on, you know, whatever it is. Um, but that is of course up to you. Okay. So now right here, you're actually ready to get started on a simple webcam setup. So if I hit next, uh, that goofy photo I just took, that's what's called a thumbnail. So that basically means that that is what students will see before you go live. So you're not live yet at this point. You see this go live button? Once you hit that, you will go live. But so if I go to share and I take this link and I copy it and I'll drop it into the chat window over here for you guys, if you go to that link, you will see this lovely thumbnail of my goofy face. That looks really bad actually. Um, right there um, waiting because I'm not actually live yet. Okay. Then once I hit go live, um, it's actually gonna take me to the live portion. And then, so this would take a minute to spin up and then it's gonna say live once you are officially live. This is not actually gonna be uh, live quite yet. I can also say that because I am doing a Google Meet on top of this, that uh, the go live does not work. But so most of you should be seeing this. God, that is a terrible photo. Um, and it says for waiting. So that means you're waiting for me to go live. But if I wasn't on Google Meet right now, this would finish loading up and then eventually uh, go live. And I'm just gonna not go live anyway because like I said, Google Meet seems to fight with this when you're trying to do both at the same time. But that is in essence a simple uh, webcam setup to get you going as quickly as possible. Um, so I wanna show you a little bit of the more advanced OBS to give you a feel for what that looks like behind the scenes. But right now, um, what questions do we have? You can unmute yourself and chat, you can do it in the chat. What's coming up, you know, uh, usually it's, Things like, you know, what do you want me to review or hit back on? Uh, why would I use this instead of Google Meet comes up? Um, what would I actually, uh, oh, can I, can I put like windows and stuff in the simple uh, setup? Uh, anything out there as far as uh, questions uh, or concerns or other things go before I roll on to that next portion. Hi, John, it's Dawn, how are you? Hey, Dawn, good, how are you doing? Good, for me, I don't meet with the students, so I would want to record I think something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I, I would probably say that. I can actually show you something in a second before we leave. I'll show you the program. I would highly, highly recommend if you just want to do offline recording to simply share it with students later. Um, I would recommend this over just doing a uh, YouTube live because uh, this one's probably going to be a little bit faster and easier. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else before I roll on anybody? No. All right, cool. So up oh, here we go. 
So if you want to go live, do I send out a dojo message or put a link in Google Classroom and tell students what time? Uh, so you can do either one, Donna. Um, just know that the link you get, you can send it to them before you actually hit the live button, or you can send it to them as you go live. Um, I would recommend beforehand telling students before, right? Expect for me to go live at this time, and then they can tune in. Uh, so that's what I would do. I would say either Dojo message or Google Classroom is fine. Whatever you're feeling, whatever your kids, your parents use the most. Um, and uh, I would say just tell them what time it is and then make sure they get the link via whatever platform you are going to uh, be using for that. It's funny, too, because Dojo, man, Dojo has come a long way. I remember using Dojo years ago, and uh, it was pretty simple, but they have done a lot to really grow that thing. And in the, uh, I'm kind of jealous it wasn't like that when I taught middle school because I would have I would have leaned into that one uh, with where it's at now. Right now it's good. Um, oh, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 whatever. Hey, nobody, nobody needs to speak. Um, so, um, on the presentation, I actually put a link here. So this is a tutorial to OBS and it's going to bring you to a YouTube page because I found that I, um, there's an advertisement again, but I had, um, I was going to make my own YouTube video of, uh, what was going to be, uh, an OBS tutorial, but I found that there are so many better ones out there. Why should I just make one that's not as good as what already exists? So I would highly recommend going through that. Um, and then I also included at the end here some other resources. And so I want to hit on these in a second. I just want to give you a quick OBS kind of overview really quick of what that actually does look like. So here, now you're probably like, oh my god, why are there so many of him? Because uh, it looks a little bit funny, right? Um, this is because this is the OBS interface. And I'll turn off the preview for the moment. So what's happening is this window is essentially set up to group together all these different things on my computer to send them to YouTube. And I could sit here and try to show you how to get this set up, but I think that those who are going to do this, I think it's better to play around with it a little bit on your own and check out the tutorial because in this as an intro, I think it's a little bit uh, complex. Um, and I say this again, if you guys have any trouble or questions with any of these things, you can reach out to me. I'll be glad to FaceTime with you, Google Meet, whatever it is to try to help you out. So down here in the left corner, lower left corner, this is what's called your scenes. And then next to them, you have your sources. Sources are essentially where you're getting the information from your scenes from. Think about scenes like a movie. It's exactly what it is, right? Different scenes have a different setup. Okay. So right here, if I put my preview back on, here's my starting scene. I've called it starting soon. This is what students I want them to see before I actually go live. The sources for this are this eagle, it's an image, and this background, which I just found for free on the internet. The next scene is called Big Me because it makes me big. It is a big shot of me with static images. So this, for example, would be what I'd put on if I'm just gonna chat for a second and I don't need to do anything live or interact. And I don't know if anybody's gears are turning in their head to kind of see what you could do with a program like this, because right off the bat, I have this degree of control that nothing else offers me, right? Google Meet can do some of this, but it can't do all this, right? I can't have all these things put exactly how I want. I mean, here, I could have a GIF of a dancing clown if it pleased me. I mean, whatever you want, right? It could be a picture of your puppy or your class pet. I don't, do they have class pets? I don't know if we have class pets anymore. Anybody, anybody help me out? I feel like it's not a thing. Um, but so I can also then go down to this window, and this is gonna be my live scene for Google Chrome. And you see how it's only this little thing in the upper left-hand corner? That's because I'm currently doing the Google Meet. But I'll show you, this is a better demonstration of it, is if I go to this um, display capture. And then let me show you what I'm talking about here. So that right here, now you can see exactly what's on my display with me in the uh, corner there, right? So if I go to, you know, google.com, right? You'll just see what's on my screen with me uh, piped into the bottom there. And I can do things like make my cam disappear. I can make it pop back up, right? Et cetera, and so on. Um, so this is different ways to play around with that. And again, you can do it in a much more sophisticated, in-depth kind of way. And then if you feel like getting extra fancy, I mean, I did this, of course, you know, just to give you, um, I'm kind of trying to give you things to, you know, I, I guess to, to whet your appetite as it is, to give you things to think about as far as how I could do different things. And so right here, I can actually set it up so that I have what is actually my um, my iPad, I can pipe it directly into the screen. And I can do that via OBS. And so I can have that in there, just so for instance, that's all the students would actually wanna see. So if I did this scene, 
um, then right now I just changed to a new scene and all my students can see is what I want them to see on my iPad. And I did that using a separate app. The app's actually called Reflector. Um, and so you can do all kinds of stuff, right? This is like my actual Google Classroom. I added these images in over here and you can just do all kinds of different things. So if you're sitting there saying to yourself, right? And this is really the, the big question usually is, why would I use one of these tools over uh, a separate one? And what are they going to offer me? So to kind of like review that, and then there's one more kind of key tool I would definitely want to show you is um, that the, the big thing that an OBS is going to offer you, of course now it's getting overwhelmed even on my good PC, um, is that it's going to offer you that degree of control that these other ones cannot get you. So if I was gonna go back here, is that this OBS basically means you have almost infinite flexibility to do exactly what you want. The webcam setup over here means that it's going to be uh, more straightforward, more simple to get going, but it's also much more um, inflexible. Uh, so that leads me to the last program I wanted to hit on, which I've actually only started using over the last couple of days. And it's actually on this last resource page and it's Loom, L-O-O-M. Loom is a screencasting software. So I don't know if anybody's been using Screencastify or some of these other programs to try to record their screen with things over top of it, but I could not recommend this one highly enough because it is dead simple. It is cross-platform, it works on Windows, it works on, I'm actually moving my hands, like you can see me right now. This is terrible, this is terrible. I mean, you're right, so, you're, so my hand moving actually makes sense. Uh, it works on Windows, Mac, iOS, I don't think they have an Android app yet, and Chromebooks. Um, now, here's why I like it a lot, and I'll turn my cam back off so you can see what I'm talking about. Once I downloaded the app, once I launched Loom, it does this very well, very simply, this little bubble with me pops up, I don't have to have it there, but I think the bubble's a nice touch. I will tell you that your kids, I, I can imagine, especially the younger kids, probably more than anybody else, they like seeing you, right? They like seeing your face, to so see that interaction. With one click, I can now record exactly what's happening on my screen. So for example, this whole presentation, I could go to the beginning, right? And then I could hit start recording. And now it's going to give me the option to go ahead and uh, three, two, one, and then boom, it's going to take this and it's recording now everything that's happening on my screen, right? However, this is not going to be live. This is for asynchronous, right? Record it now, share it later. So what I like about this is that when I click, do you see what's happening in my mouse right there? It has that little highlight, which is nice. And then in addition, I've got over here these tools that pop up. So let's say I'm at this part and I really want to highlight something instead of just waving my mouse around. I can hover over here, I can click this pen tool, make it a little bit bigger and make it blue. And now I can go and underline things and then they go away in a second to highlight certain stuff. You know, or circle that, hey, pay attention over here, whatever it is, right? And then it goes away. Now here's what the other nice piece is, is that now not only is it recording me down there, I can hit stop. And then what happens, and this happened on my other monitor, so you can't see it, but I'll show you what the link is is that now all of a sudden it just made a link right here on the Loom website and boom, here's my recording. I can copy this link and share with people right now. I could do uh, flipped classroom style stuff like this. I can do just lectures on topics I care about. Here's how I picture using Loom in my classroom is picking key topics that I wanna give short three to five minute videos on to share with students. But unlike Screencastify, there is no limit on Loom recordings. They can be as long as you'd like them to be. So for instance, you can have these things be uh, 20, 30, 40 minutes. They live on this website. You can also download the video for your personal computer. So hit download, I could download it to my physical machine, upload it to YouTube, upload it to Google Drive, wherever I wanna put it. Um, I can give these things a different name, you know, my awesome recording. And then um, I could actually password protect it. There's a whole host of things to do. And best of all, guess how much this currently costs for teachers? Zero. They actually just made it free. And here is even better. You know how all these companies are saying that they are free while COVID-19 is happening? Loom said they are now free for teachers forever. So it's nice because if you're thinking, as I said before, right, lean into these things a bit. How can I use this for my classroom now and in the future, even when we go back to face-to-face? -face? This might be a thing where you say, you know what? I'm gonna lean into this because I could bring this into my regular classroom, potentially, you know, where you wanna have a quick review. 
uh, for something, right? You want to have concepts you can refer to. And if I go to my videos in the uh, corner up here, I can, um, I can go ahead and you can see that I have different things here. I've got a couple of G Suite videos. I've been using this to help other staff right now. So for instance, if you have trouble getting set up with OBS or doing something and you ask me for help, you might find I send you a Loom link because I'm just going to go ahead, talk you through exactly what I did, and I could send it to you just like that. And so this is another option out there. Yeah, Pam, uh, I, I found this two days ago, no joke. And uh, I'm telling Kyle Herman and some of my other staff that in my mind, now that I just found this, this is, I think, going to be a great tool for a lot of our staff. And uh, this one, just as far as dead simple sharing goes and virtual instruction and face-to-face, -face, like I'm going to take this back when we go face-to-face -face again and I will use this. For instance, let's say I'm reviewing, uh, I don't know, what the concept of collective learning means in world history, right? And what that, how that applies. You know, I'll have a short video that I can just refer students back to to review that concept or for math, right? You could do that too. Ready? For math class, right? My math teacher's out there, science. What's to stop you from doing this with a jam board, right? You can do, you know, <laughs> four plus two equals six, right? And whatever it is. And then you can show them that quick short video like that. So how do we access Loom? Uh, students could comment, Dawn, if you want them to. They don't have to. But Dawn, this is what I would recommend for you. It's just Loom.com, uh, Dorothy. Loom.com. And there's an iOS app that is your iPhone. And uh, you can use it on Chromebooks. On Chromebooks, it's a little bit less powerful. Um, you don't get some of the, the mouse highlighting features and stuff, but everything else still lives in the cloud like this. Um, although I haven't used it on a Chromebook because I don't have access to one right now, but it's just loom.com. And uh, like I said, they have made everything free for teachers and they say that it will remain that way. Um, what's going to happen is if you register there, you'll get a regular account, but then they'll give you a free trial of their pro account. And then their pro account, again, is free for teachers and students. You just got to shoot them an email with your school account. Um, and, uh, oh, wait, never mind. If you're new to Loom and plan to use it for classwork, so never mind, you just sign up here with your university email, and that should do it. And if you have any problems, though, just email them here, education at loom.com, and uh, they'll give you their pro version for uh, free. They haven't given me the update yet, but I stole the pro version because they have a 30-day free trial anyway. Uh, but yeah, I could not recommend that enough. Could not recommend it enough. All right, so that is everything. I know it is a ton of information, um, but the main thing, like I said, is what I try to leave with, right, is what's best for you, what's best for your kids, what's going to fit into what you're doing. If you just said to yourself, there's no way in heck I'm going to do this um, with my students, that's fine. Don't worry about it. If pieces of it interest you, play around and try it out. If you're having trouble, reach out to me. Um, here are the resources I would recommend. Kyle's awesome helper doc, Kyle Herman, a teacher at the high school, has been putting together this Google Doc that has lots of resources. Um, this is a quick start guide to get that OBS, the fancy YouTube, going. There is the YouTube live stream overview from uh, YouTube's uh, help docs. Here's how to get the simple setup going. Here's a guide for the more complicated setup. Here's a Loom video, go figure, that I made on how to do the simple webcam setup. Uh, a link to Loom itself, Reflector 3. It costs money, but it's wonderful. You can beam your iPad or iPhone directly to your computer. Jamboard is that free Google one that we already have. Flipgrid is great, um, and I might use that, where you can do asynchronous video chat with students. This is good where you can essentially have like a discussion board up and students reply via uh, video. And then Edpuzzle is another one that's free that I'm probably going to use, which is video and quizzes uh, linked together, which is pretty cool. You can basically have like a YouTube video and then it'll stop at certain points and ask students questions to check in. And you can grade it if you want. Jamboard to write, but I have to use my mouse. Uh, Dorothy, do you have a smartphone of any sort? A smartphone or a tablet? So what I would say is, if you have a smartphone or tablet, get the app on your smartphone or your tablet and then you would write using your finger. We got free upgraded Ed Puzzle, like our district did, Janine. Because I did not get that information. Or is it just, are they doing that for everybody? Until this is over? Really? Hmm. I did not see that. All they're in the high school for sure did? Really? Hey, no problem, Pam. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, ask Sweeter. Well, dang. All right. Well, there you go. Hold on a second. Remind me to ask about Ed Puzzle today at 1.30 p.m. 
I will say, I never used to use the Reminders app, my iPhone, but suddenly it has become my godsend to keep me organized. Janine, if you could, that'd be great because I'm 100% on top of that. I want to get in on uh, Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a great thing, but usually I wanted the fancier stuff and didn't want to cough up the cash for it. Um, does anybody have more questions or so? So, I mean, I, I guess what I hopefully you leave with is, again, the goals that I set out that you feel that you could start that simple stream and everything that hopefully uh, this gives you an overview of some things you could play around with. And again, if you find this is not for you, I would say that the options I probably play around with would be a Loom or a Google Meet, where it's a little bit more of a WYSIWYG, like I said, what you see is what you get. If you're interested in getting more control, doing something more advanced, that OBS setup is gonna be it. And if you just wanna get up and started quickly, just for a simple uh, chat, uh, YouTube Live is definitely uh, gonna be good and easy uh, to access for you as uh, well as all your students. So. You guys, uh, thank you so much for being here. And uh, again, if you have questions or concerns, reach out to me.